Hi guys, it's Jamila here from Slap. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the brand new number one de Chanel foundation. This is brand new from Chanel. I am doing this at the very end of my wear test and I look very worse for wear, but I did forget to do my intro, so I'm just going to get into it. But if you haven't subscribed already, guys, please subscribe. I would love to have you in the Slap family. And without further ado, guys, here is the video. So this is the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. I got this in the shade BD21. It is my first foundation from Chanel, so I have no idea what my shade is. I actually got this via press. Thank you very much to Chanel for sending this to me. I didn't actually have a chance to go in the store and check it out because I just really wanted to get it. So I got the shade, I guessed my shade. I think it's the right shade. I think it might be right. It looks about right. So I'm gonna read you guys some of the blur very quickly. This is my first Chanel foundation. I believe that this one is sustainable. It was launched as part of their new number one de Chanel uh, sustainable eco green planet friendly earth friendly conscious <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, conscious collection. So I'm going to be testing it out for you guys today. I've got a lot of spots. I'm not happy about it. I've been using a lot of sweets. I've also been using a lot of weird skincare. I'm not really sure what's to blame. I'll blame myself. Um, so yeah, so, so this foundation is available at Chanel.com. It is £55 and 70 US dollars. I believe the Lisa Eldridge was 60 US, 60 US dollars, so it's a bit more expensive than the Lisa Eldridge. It is 30 mils and one fluid ounce. I got the shade BD121, which I believe is actually my shade. This foundation has 20 shades and after me there is 132 which looks a bit more red, 152 it looks a bit more neutral and BL172 which looks a bit more ready neutral. So I think I'm the last, BD121 looks like the last golden shade. Under that there is BD91, B70, B60, B50, BR42, BD41, B40, BD31, BR32, B30, BR22, BD21, B20, BR12, B10, and BD01. So from what I can gather, BD means warm, golden undertone, BR is red, and then B, I believe, is neutral. Um, after me, that is BR132, BR152, and B172. But from the swatches, it looks like BR152 is a bit more of a neutral than a red. So not many golden tones after me, so hopefully this is going to span a lot more of the golden undertone, deeper skin tones. Um, and hopefully, if not, BR152 will be the next best match from what I can see on the swatches alone. It's very cute. It came in a very cute little box. It felt very petite when I saw it. It says the red camellia is a flower unlike any other and the key ingredient in number one de Chanel. A flower with revitalizing powers whose extraordinary, en extraordinary energy gives it perennial youth. Chanel Research has harnessed its exceptional properties to create a new generation of beauty products, including skincare, makeup, and a fragrance mist. At the core of the number one de Chanel beauty line, Red Camellia Extract targets uh, stage number one of the skin's aging process, working to prevent and correct the appearance of the five signs of aging. After applying the number one de Chanel skincare ritual, wrinkles appear diminished, pores are visibly refined, and the skin's elasticity is restored. The skin feels more comfortable and glows with vitality. So I'm excited about this. It does say it's going to have skincare benefits to it, and that the red camellia extract that they use is supposed to help with aging. So this is another anti-aging foundation. Let's see if it's as good as my Dior capture to tell the best thing ever I love it very much so if this is anything like that I'm going to be a very happy bunny also just recently tried the NARS which is fantastic so it's quite exciting the packaging looks cute it says it is plumping makeup it says it is a skincare foundation that illuminates hydrates and protects for skin that is more beautiful day after day this is the foundation here it doesn't really say that much about the sustainability aspect of it but from what I remember of the launch of the number one de Chanel and I believe from the press release which I could probably find is that it is a more eco-conscious line okay so I just whipped up the press release it says coated pigments for long wear combined with a second skin effect film forming duo enable this foundation to even out skin tone and correct the look of imperfections it's revitalizing formula composed of 94% ingredients of natural origin that's what gives it a bit more of a green POV the packaging so far looks super cute, just having a look at it. It's got the little red camellia on the front. It says number one Chanel BD121, which is the shade I got. 
30 mils, one fluid ounce, and on the little side there's a QR code which I did use to just get me straight to the product, which is super helpful. And also when I used this specific QR code, it actually took me to my shade, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna show you the packaging, but I'm gonna get into a demo. As is the swatches on, I actually really think the Chanel one definitely does have a lot of glow to it. It's quite shiny, it does have a lot of radiance, which I can see. Uh, it's not really like anything else I have. It's probably the most red, apart from the Valentino. It's a little bit lighter than the Valentino though, but the Charlotte Tilbury 13 Warm definitely puts it into perspective as it not being that light. When I was swatching it compared to everything else, I was like, oh, it's quite it's quite a bit lighter than everything else I have. But as soon as I swatched the Charlotte Tilbury 13 Warm, I realized it wasn't as light as that, which is good. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury Warm is definitely the most, uh, 13 Warm is definitely the biggest anomaly or the most, the biggest outlier of them all. I don't have the dual one anymore. I've sent that back. 
Not sure whether it's for an exchange return yet. We shall see. Hopefully it's for a return. So I do think this is not too far off my other shades. It's not really rich enough. It's not really as rich as the Lisa, the Dior, um, the Pat. But it's definitely deeper than the Charlotte Tilbury, which is good. So at least that's something. At least I know it's not going to look as jarring as that one did. But it definitely does have a bit more of a neutral, pinky... Uh, red undertone to it than I thought it would um, and definitely compared to everything else I have but I do have high hopes for this I'm going to go in with light layers because I don't want it to be uh, too intense and too different from my face one thing I would say is that the packaging is really cute it's very simple very minimal it's very small very petite but it is 30 mils it's quite weird because the actual bottle itself feels quite matte and looks quite matte and the lids feels quite matte and looks quite matte but then when you actually you see the foundation it's quite glowy so it's quite a nice juxtaposition and it does also feel very unisex I definitely feel like this is a foundation that a man or a woman can have um, and I do quite like that about it I think it's quite gender neutral which is quite nice I feel like the, the shade should be okay so we'll see definitely did feel glowy though so I'm just going to start with one side I'm going to do a wear test but it's quite late it's quite late in the day I've had a long day um so yeah so I'm just going to pop it on this side I'm going to use my trusty sponge my black beauty blender I really look fairly glowy during, I do look exhausted which I am um so I'm going to just give this a good shake something I never do actually give it a good shake I'm going to pop one pump on my that's actually quite a big pump so that's one pump here. There is a, a slight scent to it. It's quite floral. The scent is quite long actually. It does have a nice glow to it. It's definitely evened up my complexion already and I feel like the shade doesn't look too bad at all comparing it to the rest of my body. It looks pretty good. It's actually evened me out much nicer than I looked. So I'm going to pop a little bit more on before I even out both sides just so we can see what it looks like compared to the other side. Definitely looks really nice, definitely looks a lot more even. I don't actually see a huge difference between layers one and two, which I do think is really nice. It doesn't feel cakey, doesn't feel like it looks too heavy or too thick. And I do think the shade so far seems pretty, pretty good. So on the other side, I'm going to pop on um, some foundation. It does feel very lightweight. I don't know if I feel a little bit dry in the peripheries of my face. I don't know if that's just me, um, but it does feel very lightweight. Apart from that, I can't feel it on at all. I really like the glow of this. It's building up to a really nice glow, but it doesn't feel like overly shiny. I do like that, guys. So that's it with one and a half layers on both sides. I do think it's really nice, actually. It feels very lightweight. It feels very soft. It feels very soft on. 
and it's like very hydrated and nice i really like the glow on this it's not too glowy it kind of reminds me of the nars uh radiant light foundation very nice and naturally glowy not over the top glowy but quite quite nice i feel like the nars one felt very different um but this one is nice as well i like it so i'm going to change light and then i'm going to pop on some concealer and then i will do the rest of my face So guys, that is it. That's my finished look. That is the new number one De Chanel foundation on. I do like it. I think it's nice. It's actually got a bit more of a matteness to it than it did initially. Once I powdered just under my eyes and around my cheeks, it definitely does have a bit more of a matteness, less of a glow. I think the shade's not bad at all. I don't think it's a spot on match, but I don't think it's bad. Um at all so i do like it it feels nice i don't know if i love it as much as the nars but it does have a really nice it does have a really nice softness to it, it feels very cushiony and cozy on my skin and it does look really nice i think it's something i'll definitely enjoy playing with the thing i love the most about it is how much it evened out my complexion i'm going to be wearing it throughout the day well there's not much of the day left but i'm going to be giving it a bit of a wear test so we'll see how it goes I'm going to do a quick wear test. It is now 5:23 p.m. Uh, so I'm going to leave this on for the rest of the day. I'm going to go about my business. <laughs> my business. I'm back, looking very interesting. I think it's the lips that make me look even more bizarre than I was before. So it is now. I tried to keep this on for as long as possible. So it's now two. <laughs> it's now 12:20. I put this on at I believe it was 523 I know because I've been waiting for it to be 12 something for a very long time so let's see I put this on at 523 now 1220 so I've had this foundation on for seven hours or in three minutes it will be seven hours exactly but I did have it on for a bit before anyway I am looking slightly more worse for wear, but I do think this is a pretty decent wear test for seven hours I've been wearing a mask I've been out and about I've been at home I've been doing a bit of work I've been touching my face and um, I even washed the front of my hair because I wanted to tone it um, in anticipation of my blow dry tomorrow so I feel like it's actually been quite robust it looks pretty good it's got a nice dew to it. it looks a bit more natural than it did uh, when I first applied it but it doesn't look as dewy as the Dior Forever Glow did at the end of the day um, this feels a bit more uh, controlled um, the glow feels a bit more controlled than the Dior Forever Glow did at the end of the day so I do like it I feel like it's got a really good coverage still I feel like it looks really good it's worn really nicely I do look quite tired under the eyes but I always do so yeah I think it looks really nice actually I think it's one of my favorites at the end of the day and um, so I'm going to give you guys a quick close-up and then I'm going to finish up guys that is it that is the chanel number the number one to chanel foundation this is actually a really nice foundation and i think actually one layer one coat would have been enough for me one layer would have been enough i did go in with an extra half layer on each side and i don't think i really needed it i think that's when i found it a bit less uh like laissez-faire a bit less carefree i did much prefer it i think with just one layer on and i'd probably just do one layer and pop a little bit of concealer on it and feel pretty comfortable with that because it's quite got quite a good initial coverage on it it doesn't really need like layering up and layering up which is quite good kind of reminds me of the um 
the NARS in that respect, it does have a really good coverage first off the bat without being like super heavy. So I think it's got a really nice medium coverage to start with. So I probably would just leave it with one layer and not go in with the extra layer, which is what I did this time. Um, but yeah, I do like it. I think it's nice. I definitely, I'm going to be wearing it more for the next couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to wearing it more and seeing how it wears in different conditions and with different makeup. And yeah, I think it was nice. The packaging was good. It was a bit scented, but it's not a scent that really lingers or a scent that I've thought about again um, since I first applied it. I really like the way it wears. I think it's got a really decent wear. Seven hours is really good. It looks good for seven hours. And yeah, I like it. I think it's good. Definitely prefer it with, I think less is more with this one, um, but I think it's pretty decent. Is it as good as the NARS? I'm not sure. The NARS was really, really good, but I definitely feel like it's top two, top three. Um, so yeah, I will be doing a roundup very soon on all of these. My hair looks very interesting. I'll be doing a roundup very soon on all of these and trying to pit them against each other and also against other things I have. There are a few which I know you guys will want to see them compared with and a few I would definitely be intrigued to see them compared with. So I will definitely do that probably next week maybe if I manage to get my hands on the NARS full size in time. Not bad for my first Chanel foundation. I'm pretty happy with the shade match. I think it's the best... That I, that I would be able to get from that shade range and I don't feel like it was bad, I didn't look too light like the Charlotte Tilbury one did, didn't look too rich like the Charlotte Tilbury one did and it didn't look as like jarringly weird and undertone as the Dior Forever Glow one did. So pretty good, so far so good. Is it as good as the Macau shade match? Probably not, but it's not far off. So I do like it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below guys. Will you be buying it? Will you be trying it? Let me know. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you haven't subscribed already guys, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the Slap family. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.